Hi guys. <laughs> My name is Steph. I have bipolar disorder type one with psychotic features and mixed episodes. <sighs> I was diagnosed really late in life, so I didn't get put on medication with a proper diagnosis until seven years ago. So I lived a majority of my life not on medication, which caused me to destroy my life uh, four separate times and also hurt a lot of my loved ones. Um, so I do this channel to advocate for medication compliance. And one of the major things is that I try to do is try to help people who have a loved one with bipolar disorder better understand what they are going through, particularly when they are in psychosis or any form of mania. Um, so yeah, that's my channel. I would love it if you subscribed and comment. And so today I am going to be talking about my marriage. <laughs> I tried to make a couple of videos like this already, but it was hard because it's uh, another emotional topic. <clears throat> and I've been wanting to do this video for months and it's just really hard. So marriage with a bipolar individual is never easy, never easy. Um, a significant amount of people with bipolar disorder in marriages end up divorce. I don't know the exact percentage. You can Google it. I looked it up once before. It's very, very high. <laughs> Uh, it, it's not uncommon for a person with bipolar to uh, go out and max out a credit card in mania and in, in compulsive spending, which is a symptom of bipolar disorder. Um, so that's not uncommon. Uh, it's so because of that and because that something like that can have significant consequences. In my fourth psychotic episode, where I had, right after I got married, I was running the streets, I was wandering the streets, I should say. I was applying for lines of credit. I was trying to buy a new car. <laughs> um, so uh, my husband filed for legal separation. And I was completely in psychosis out of my mind at this point. Um, but we've had that legal separation in place for ever since it happened, since 2016. So like, oftentimes like when we have like, a, like, a, like not an argument, but like we're like, not even, not even an argument at all. Like he'll say it like when we're talking about stuff, but like my husband will say something and about us being married and he'll be like, well, we're not, we're not even married. And just to mess with me. Um, but it sucks because it really hurts me that we're not, that we're not married. And it's like a, it's like a reminder, you know, that I'm damaged and that I have to have a special marriage, you know, for, for people with a bipolar disorder. But I've been stable on medication now for almost seven years. I did have, uh, it did start to go into an episode a year ago. Uh, I had not had an episode for five, five years, six years. I had not had an episode for five years and my dog died and, uh, in a very horrific way was hit by a car right in front of my eyes. Uh, so <clears throat> I didn't sleep for three days. My husband noticed that there was something wrong with me and I took myself to the hospital. Because I was able to get to that point, I think we both realized it's okay to undo the legal separation. So we have been trying to do that. And it has been a nightmare. I want to be married. I want to be married to my husband. I know it's just a legal thing. I like he really it's not that important to him because everything goes to me anyway. If something were to happen and California's like a 50-50, I mean, we're never going to split up, but who else would want to be with someone like me? Um someone that's put their family and husband through so much. Uh but yeah, so 
so it does, doesn't concern him that much. Like it does, it doesn't bother him as much as it does me. So the process of undoing legal separation is not easy. So we go to the courthouse, do a bunch of research to find out which forms we have to fill out in order to get a legal separation undone. And so we fill out the forms and everything. We have to go to like the law library. We do all this research um, and we submit it to the clerk. And then we have to, he had to serve me. So we had to do that too. And then they gave us a court date and we were coming. And so we finally went back to court. So this has been going on for a couple of months and it's been really upsetting. I feel Like a lot of people think that when you have bipolar disorder, they think that when you're out of the mania or when you're no longer in a depression or you're no longer in mania, that everything is fine, that, you know, you're, you're recovered and it's not, there's always, always consequences. And when it's happening, loved ones, I feel like tend to think, well, don't they realize there's there's consequences to their actions? And when we're in psychosis, we're not in reality. And for me personally, when I was in psychosis, it was like there was no present and there was no future. It was only right now. And the way that I explain it to people is there's so many thoughts. It's, they say that you're, according to my psychiatrist, we don't remember a lot when we when we get sick. So according to my psychiatrist, it's like you, you have all these, these thoughts and your, your brain is like trying to grab for, for the one thought. And so it's moving at such a fast pace that you're just struggling to even come up with a thought and words to match that thought. And our actions are so controlled by our thoughts and our thoughts are completely hindered and, and disrupted when, when we're in psychosis. The point was, though, before I went off on that tangent, we always have these consequences that we have to deal with. And this is just another consequence, another reminder that I screwed up, you know, like I, I destroyed my first year of my marriage, was in psychosis the whole time. And so I feel really uh, frustrated and sad about the whole situation if I if I think about it too much. But we went to court and uh, went in front of the judge and the judge, uh, and I was there with my husband and the judge said, I we filed a motion to vacate the, the, the decision and he said, I see no reason why I should vacate this, that ship has sailed. And I was so, upset and hurt I stormed out of the courtroom and it was almost like it was I just I just wanted to cry so bad and I didn't want anybody to see me cry so I stormed out of there my husband's like chasing after me um because I was so upset by what the judge said and and before that let me just say before that when we were filling out the paperwork to get the legal separation undone there's a part on the form that says, why are you doing this? Why do you want to undo the legal separation? And my husband wrote, because my wife is bipolar and she's on medication now. And when I saw that, I was so upset. I was so hurt. And I was like, why couldn't you just say we'd reconciled? He's like, you have to put a reason. Like he didn't do it to hurt me, but they asked for a reason and, and that's the reason. And like at this point, I should be owning my bipolar disorder. I should be okay with that, but I'm not. Every single time I go to a new doctor or have to put on a form, are you on any medication? And I have to write down my medication. I'm embarrassed. Is this person going to be judging me because I'm bipolar? Are they going to know that this is a psych med? My mailman delivers my mail. Does he know how much medication I'm on? Seeing on paper, my wife is bipolar and she's on medication now, it just like stung so bad. And <clears throat> and then the judge, so so that whole process and, and my husband was annoyed with having to find the right papers and everything. It was just, it was a total nightmare. And um, 
I spoke with a, a legal, another person at the law library yesterday and they told me they didn't know what the hell the judge was talking or the judge must have not known what he was talking about, which is really scary if he's a judge. Well, she didn't understand why our request wasn't granted. So that's even more frustrating. Now I'm thinking, well, does maybe the judge knows someone with bipolar. And so he thinks, he thinks we shouldn't, he's trying to like be part of the boys club, you know, like protect my husband and that I probably forced him into undoing this legal. So, you know, all these thoughts in my head. So again, it's like, it just doesn't like, for people who have bipolar, you already know that it doesn't end when it ends. Like there's always these pieces you have to pick up and put together, like expunging a criminal record, repairing a relationship, all of the hard stuff, all the, the you know, like getting your license back, you know, uh, getting a restraining order against you dropped all kinds of all kinds of consequences, you know, like or or failing an exam because you stayed up all night to study for it and then went into hypomania. There are all kinds of consequences that we have to deal with. So for, for loved ones to be able to look at that and understand it, it's really, really helpful. Um, my husband's a great support system. I'm really lucky that I have him. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah. I don't know what else I can say. I just wanted to say that about the consequences and about how it sucks <clears throat> when you have to like do all this cleaning up stuff. And like even where I'm at, like I have a vlog where I talk about bipolar. I share that I have bipolar, but still telling people and seeing it on paper hurts. And it hurts to have to convey that you have some kind of mental illness or a, a medical condition because that's not the way the world sees it they just a lot of people just think we're crazy so yeah i hope this was helpful i hope it helped put a little perspective i really hope for those of you with bipolar disorder it makes you feel less alone i would love it if you subscribed if you enjoyed this video and um i will see you next time thank you so much for watching bye